Welcome to a large model showman's engine part 80. Speeds and feeds in the home workshop. There is a big difference between commercial high speed industrial machining methods and amateur model engineering machining in a modest home workshop. And I fall into the latter category. I am not a professional model engineer. This is my hobby. And at the moment I'm not even in the workshop. I'm having a look at the traction engine cylinder. And just in case you wonder what I'm making, it's an ornamental cover to fit over the original cylinder cover. Here it is, sat on a very large piece of metal that I bought to make the ornamental cover. What I'm doing at the moment is measuring the length of the studs that hold the cylinder cover to the cylinder. I need to know how deep the recess needs to be in this ornamental cylinder cover to fit over the existing one. Just to be on the safe side, I measured every one of the cylinder cover studs and they are all three quarters of an inch from the face of the cylinder. I have a long way to go before I start to machine this recess because the piece of metal that I bought is purposely much larger than I need in order to make some videos about how to do it and how not to do it. And once again, an immediate warning, do not handle this swarf with your fingers as you can see here, I'm moving it out of the way with a pair of grips. Some carbide tips are designed to break up the swarf into smaller pieces, but this one doesn't seem to be doing that, as the swarf is coming off in more or less one continuous length. In this clip, I'm doing a bit of longitudinal turning. The lathe is running at its slowest normal speed without engaging back gear. And also, the longitudinal automatic traverse is set to the slowest speed. In no time at all, there is a problem. There's a whole bunch of swarf around the tool. This needs to be removed. I stopped the lathe, removed the swarf, and then continued. In this next clip, I'm facing across the front of the piece of metal. I really do need to make this a lot thinner than it is, and I only bought such a big piece for the video as I mentioned earlier. I really hope that I'll live long enough to see the end of this part of the series. Now I'm going to show you how to do the job wrong. With the lathe running at its slowest normal speed, that's without back gear engaged, the auto traverse feed is a little bit on the fast side and the whole thing grinds to a halt. During this mild lockup, the lathe wasn't damaged and the cutting tool wasn't broken. I have two back gear speeds, slow and fast. This is the faster back gear speed. And once again, here is the power cross feed speed. This seems to be about right. It's removing metal and the lathe isn't being strained and the part isn't getting too hot because it's not making as much smoke. I don't use industrial coolant or soluble oil. And yes, I do know that you can buy soluble oil that isn't as smelly as some brands, but I've never needed to use any in my workshop. In this clip, I'm trying a different cutting tool. This is the round nose tool that I would normally use for machining cast iron. But I don't like the noise that it's making with this piece of stainless steel. It's removing the metal okay, but it isn't removing any more metal than the other tool, so I think I'll go back to that. I know, I'll try some lubricant. Which doesn't seem to make much difference. That high-pitched shriek is not good for my ears. So I think I will go back to the other tool. I've also fitted a new tip to this tool, so it's a lot sharper and cuts much better than it did previously. This is a really good tip tool, because you can turn over the tip and you can use both sides of it, so you get six goes from every tip. In the next episode, you will see me using a boring tool. And I don't like this boring tool, because the tip only allows for two uses. You can't turn it over, and you can only use the front and rear of it. But this one's great if you foul up and damage the tool, which of course I do frequently. I just slacken off the bolt, Move the clamp in a rearwards direction and refit the tool on the spigot in a different position. And as you can clearly see in this clip, it is cutting a lot better. It's taking a deeper cut and it sounds better. 
I'd like to mention that normally I would turn a part all the way across in one go, removing a small amount of metal at each pass. What I'm doing for the purposes of the video is turning the part in degrees. That's to show the tool taking deeper cuts without stopping the lathe. Using mild steel and a suitable tool, in the past I've managed to take half an inch off a piece of bar, but it wasn't stainless steel, it was free cutting mild steel, and really the tool was only removing quarter of an inch, but obviously there are two sides to a piece of bar, so it was removing half an inch at one pass. This stainless steel is very unforgiving, you have to be careful, you must never let the tool rub, and you must keep the tool going at all times. Although I must admit, I'm really pleased with how this piece of stainless steel is turning, and the finish on the surface of the metal that I'm getting is very good. It'll be just my luck to take the very, very final cut once I've made this part, and it will chatter or something stupid like that. It's a good idea in the scheme of things to try and make it so that the final cut is not quite as shallow because it will probably work better if the tool is taking just a little bit more than you would be comfortable with. I'm also going to experiment later on, once I get the part almost finished, with finer cuts and very high speed, well, very high speed by the standard of my lathe. When I first bought this lathe many years ago, it was fitted with a two horsepower, three phase, three speed motor and this was no good to me at all, I just did not have a converter that would provide enough power to make it go. I do not have a three-phase supply in my workshop, so I changed the motor for a single speed, one horsepower version. And this only gives me four speeds, two on the gearbox and two on the back gear, which I've always found to be fine for everything that I want to do. What I'm doing here is centre drilling a hole in the middle of the piece of metal. I increase the feed near the centre of the work and as you can see there are lots of lines in it. But this doesn't matter because I'll be drilling a hole in this position. I was just trying to demonstrate that at the edge of the piece of bar it's spinning really fast and the surface speed is high. But as you move closer to the centre of the piece of bar the surface speed is much lower, and you can actually increase the feed. That's about it for this episode. The last thing I need to do now is exactly the same as in the previous episode. I'm removing the swarf into a carrier bag so I can dispose of it. That's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.